Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Bador Noor collection from Colourpop. I don't know if that's the actual name of the collection, but it's their collection based off a French love story. That's what they're describing it as. I'm surprised this wasn't a Valentine's Day collection because the collection is very romantic, dreamy. They did send me this in PR. I got the entire collection besides one of the palettes. I just have the Bador Noir, the blush, the glitter, and and the Lux oils. So you guys know how my reviews go down. I'm going to share my thoughts on the collection, show you swatches, comparisons, and then of course my three looks towards the end. So if you guys are curious about any of that, then please continue watching. Alright, so let's start off with the shadow palette review first. We have the Bador Noir. This is 18 US dollars. And in this palette, you will receive six mattes, one sequence, four metallics, and one pressed glitter. So I think the range of finishes in this palette is pretty spot on. There's a good solid amount of mattes. We had the metallics, one press glitter, which I do like. I know press glitter is not for everyone, but for me, I think one press glitter in a palette is like the max that I'll go. And honestly, with this collection, I didn't even know it came out. That's just how like far behind I'm in Colourpop. I didn't really see this launch. I think this might have been a Ulta exclusive palette, but then they brought it to the website. I didn't even know. Like, it's just... It's a lot to take in. So I didn't really know about this palette, so it was a surprise when I got it in PR. And when I did get it in PR, I looked at it and I was like, you know, these tones are pretty, but I actually was hoping that I would have gotten the other, like, pinky mauve palette, because you guys know me now. I'm a cool tone, a mauve gal all of a sudden. So when I saw this palette, I was just like, you know, it's just a basic old palette, but... But when I started playing with it, I really fell in love with the looks that I created out of this. I think there's a really, really good range of the looks that you can create. And I think my three looks really showcase that. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I'm just saying, like, I think look one, you get those neutral tones. And then look two is a mix of neutral and those olives. And then the look that I'm currently wearing, it's very green. And I feel like that's the range you'll get is neutrals and olives. And I think the color combination and the color story is actually quite nice. I think this is a palette that I'm actually going to take out for a little bit so I can play with it a little bit more because I really really enjoyed it because sometimes when I do my review I'll review a palette and then I'll just like sort of store it away into my collection I don't usually keep every single palette that I try out to test out for a longer period because I just got to move on to the next one sort of thing but this one I'm like no I want to keep this out for a bit I really enjoyed it but in saying that I'm not telling you guys to like go and get this palette right now because because I think individually the shades in here is very very dupable I feel but of course I'll show you guys my comparisons and you guys can see um, how you feel and what you already have in your collection because I feel like a lot of the shades we have seen before for sure I'm not saying it's anything new but I enjoyed this palette a lot so yeah we'll leave it at that Um, next in the collection is a little mini glitter duo. The two shades is Glaze and In Your Eyes. I did use Gaze in um, look one. I didn't use In Your Eyes. I'm probably going to pass that one on because I do have a glitter that's quite similar to that. Gaze is a little bit more unique into my little glitter collection, but I personally feel like there was already one glitter in here that I didn't really need another like little duo set. But the little glitter set is $10 and I do think it's quite affordable considering you get two and even though these pots are so small they will last you forever because you don't need a lot of glitter when you're playing with it on your eyes then I have one out of the two blushes they released so I think one blush was meant to suit Bador Noir and the other blush was supposed to suit the Minage Amour 
palette and this is 10 US dollars. I love this blush. I've actually used this multiple times off camera when I wasn't filming my looks. I think it's just like a really nice like dusty everyday blush for me and I'm gonna keep this in my top drawer. I recently just organized and decluttered my collection and this is the problem that I have is like when I like something I just chuck it into my top drawer but I feel like this is a blush that I feel like I will use a lot and it's just like appropriate for every day. It matches a lot of the eye looks. I'm not wearing it today on my cheeks because I wanted something a little bit more orange but for the other two looks I did wear it a lot. It is a satin so you will get like a sheen to your cheeks. It's not a complete matte but I really love this color. And then lastly in the collection we have two Luxe lip oils and these are eight US dollars each. The two shades is First Date and Truth Bomb. First Date is more of like a peachy sort of nude and then Truth Bomb is more of like a cool tone nude. Because everybody is wearing masks right now, something a little bit more on the hydrating side is more appropriate than like let's say a lipstick or a liquid lipstick. So I can see why and I do feel like if you do have a lot of their Lux oils or even just the glosses, when they're so sheer they almost look so similar on the lips that you don't really see too much of a difference because the tint is just like not opaque at all. But I really do like the Lux oils. I think they are very hydrating on the lips and you can use these as glosses as well on top. If you don't like glosses but you want something like a bit shiny on your lips then I would say give the Lux oils a go. Out of the two, which one would I recommend? Definitely first date. This one just has more of a warmer tint to it. And that was pretty much my review on their French Love Story collection. I would say my favorites out of the collection would have to be the Love Story blush. I just find that this one is a blush that I'm going to continue using a lot. I can just see it already. This tone, this dusty pinky tone, is it just not me in a blush? I feel like it is. So I really love this. It would have been perfect if it was a matte. I would have loved that even more, but I still can use this um, nonetheless. So Love Story would have to be my favorite and I actually really do like the palette but I would say just see what's already in your collection because it's very dupable. But again, with my reviews, I'm not trying to tell you like go and get it. That's why I do my comparison so you guys can see what you already have in your collection. Alright, jumping into the first look, we're going to start off with the shade Silk Sheet and this is going to be our transition shadow. So I'm just going to work that sort of onto my lid and then I'll slowly bend that up into my crease. Recently, this is how I've been placing down my sort of transition base color is placing it on my lid and then slowly blending that up. I feel like doing it this way, you're not really overtaking your eyes because sometimes when you go straight into the crease, it can look a little bit overpowering. So I just find myself applying my transition shadow this way recently. I also take silk sheets onto my lower lash line as well. I'm just going to sweep that from the outer corner right to the inner corner just getting a good shadow going. Then I'm going to move into the shade Vibin and I'm going to use this to deepen out the outer corners. The shadow appears much darker once it's on the eyes. I feel like in the pan it looks a little bit more to the medium side but once it's on the eyes it's very pigmented, it's very dark. I did not go back in with any further product. This is just a couple of dips straight onto my eye and you can see a little bit goes a long way. So I'm just using circular motions to get this blended out. I also take that onto my lower lash line as well. I'm just going to be defining underneath my waterline just at the outer third towards the middle. Then I'm going to take the shade Good Night and I'm going to place this at the inner third of my eyes. This shadow is stunning. I think it's a very like fine metallic so a lot of those little specks of glitter really shine through and they really catch the light really well and I think contrasted against the dark outer corners it just shines even brighter. So I'm going to take this shadow up towards my crease and really diffuse that out. I also take that into my inner corners as well to highlight that area and I'm also going to take that onto my lower lash line at the inner third to highlight that region. 
I then take one of the glitter gels in the shade Gaze and I'm gonna apply that right on top of Goodnight. So mainly on my lower lash line at the inner third, I just take a little bit of these glitters. It's definitely going to give more dimension to the metallic with the chunkier glitters. And now just taking my brown liquid liner, I'm gonna use this to align my lash line and also create a wing. I do, however, go in with a black eyeshadow to smudge and extend that wing out. And then lastly, to finish off the look, I'm just going to be popping on my lashes. I'm going to be wearing the Boudoir Lights from House of Lashes. Alright you guys, so this is the first look completed. For the first look, I wanted to create something that was more approachable and very easy to do. This is one of my go-to techniques and I always love how it turns out no matter what shades I use. But I think the shades that we did use are very neutral and very subtle, but then you get that pop in the inner corner with those glitters and golds. So I really love how this turned out. I would call this my everyday glam. It's not too much in your face but it's not too too dramatic so I really love how it turned out hopefully you guys will like it too So we're now onto the second look. I'm gonna start off with the shade Desire and this is going to be our transition shadow. So I'm just going to work that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions. I do take a bit of that onto my lid space as well, but it's mainly going into the crease. This is going to be our base color and the shade that you really see throughout the eye look. And I also take this shadow onto my lower lash line as well, just to get some definition going. Next, I'm going to move into the shade Vibin. I'm going to start packing this onto my lid space. I'm going to focus it mainly on my lid and then I'll slowly blend that up into my crease and blend that towards the transition shadow. Vibin is pretty dark, so just take a little bit on your brush and work in baby steps. It's easier to work like that rather than taking too much on your brush and you can't reverse what you just did. So just take baby steps, take your time. It is very easy to blend out, but you just need to take a little bit on your brush. And then I'm going to take the shade Hot Toddy and I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing. Just taking a smaller brush and I'm going to pack that onto my lid. I'm not going to blend this up too high into my crease because we want that gradual uh, gradient blend from light to dark. So the darker shadow you want to keep it closer to your lid and lash line rather than blending it into the crease. But I'm also going to take the shadow onto my lower lash line. I'm really going to press that up against my waterline just so we can balance out the eyes. And now I'm taking the shade Nap. I'm going to place that at the center of my eyes. That's where the most pigmentation is going to be. And the center of your eyes is where the light catches the most. So that's where I want the most pigmentation to go. But then I'm sort of just going to blend that out around the edges and kind of put it all over my eyes. All right, so now I'm going to take my black liquid liner. I'm going to use this to align my lash line and also create a small wing. I will go in with a black eyeshadow to help smudge and extend and smoke out that wing because you guys know how much I love a good smoky wing. I also take the cream gel liner from ColourPop in the shade Stomper and I'm going to use this to tight line my entire bottom waterline. And then I'm just going to take Goodnight from the palette and I'm going to use this to highlight my inner corners and then lastly I'm gonna pop on my false lashes I am wearing the boudoir light from house of lashes And this, you guys, is the second look completed. I love the final outcome and I know a lot of you guys love this look as well because I wore it in my previous video and so many of you guys asked for a tutorial. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this second look. Thank you. 
All right, so we're now onto the final look. I'm gonna start off with the shade Late Ticks and I'm gonna work this straight into my crease using windshield wiping motion. This is going to be our base color, so you wanna take your time with this dip because we wanna make sure this is well blended out. So I'm just gonna go back and forth, windshield wiping motions. I'm gonna blend it up towards my brow bone and also towards the outer corners. I also take this shadow onto my lower lash line as well, just sweeping that from the outer corner towards the middle of my lower lash. Next, I'm gonna go into the shade Hot Toddy and I'm gonna first focus the shadow at the outer corners of my eyes, just stamping on the product there and getting the most pigmentation. And then I'll slowly blend that into the inner part of my crease. What's most important about a half cut crease look is just getting a lot of definition and darkness in the crease area because that way when you cut your crease out, it has something darker to contrast against and it's gonna bring it forward and just make it more pronounced and that's what we want. So just getting a lot of definition at the crease area and also at the outer corners. I also take Hot Toddy onto my lower lash line as well. I'm just going to use a defining brush to press that up against my waterline only at the outer corners. Next, I'm going to go in with the P. Louise eyeshadow base. You can use a concealer. This is just what I have on hand, but I'm going to take this onto the inner part of my lid space and I'm going to bring that up all the way past the natural fold of my crease. So my lids are actually uneven today, so I had to really go by feel, honestly, and just match this eye to the eye that I did off camera and it's a little bit tricky to do that I feel personally I don't know but obviously if you don't have this problem then it'll be much easier to match up I do feel like the eye that I'm showing you right now is a little bit smaller you just want to make sure you are going past the natural fold of your crease so that way when you look up the metallic shadow that we place on top will not transfer and now I'm taking the shade sleep in and we're gonna place that right on top of the P. Louise base this shadow is so stunning it's so metallic. I'm not using it wet. This is just on its own. It looks so good contrast against the uh, darker olive tones. So you just want to place this metallic shadow where you place the P. Louise base. You don't want to go any further with that. Now I am taking the shade Goodnight and I'm just going to sweep this right underneath that cut crease line again just to bring this forward and make it more pronounced and Goodnight is the lightest metallic shadow so I'm going to use that to help emphasize the cut crease line. I also take uh, the pressed glitter in the palette called Bedtime Story and I do take that against that cut crease line as well just to give a little bit more dimension. And now I'm just taking my black liquid liner. I'm going to use this to line my lash line and also create a little wing. I will go in with a black eyeshadow just to help smoke and smudge that wing out. And then just popping on my false lashes, I am wearing Natalia Light from House of Lashes. All right, you guys, so this is the final look completed. I hope you guys like it. It's been a while since I've done a half cut crease, but every time I do this technique, I just fall in love with it again. Even though I've been into natural makeup recently, I just can't help but love this type of glam. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this final look. I feel like the color story is really fun as well, especially from this palette. And that you guys was my three looks. Be sure to let me know which look out of the three was your favorite down below. I would love to hear your feedback. That also does help me a lot as well because it lets me know which type of looks you guys like to see. And of course, in return, I will do more of those kinds of looks. So let me know down below in the comments. I would love to hear it. And also, if you guys did find this video helpful, I would appreciate it so much if you could give it a thumbs up for me. It does help my videos out a lot as well and it also helps with the algorithm. So give it a thumbs up if you did find it helpful. I will, of course, link everything down below in my description box as always. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Come join the family. I upload about three times a week and I would love to see you guys back if you enjoy what I do here. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!